about by side and an introduction to pipeline and industrial development. And they will be given by me, Willie Moreira, and by Bruno Arau. Uh, we work at INDT. INDT is the North Institute of Technology. We are a research and development uh, center with focus in developing new concepts, products, and solutions to other related to mobile technologies and internet. Uh, we have, we have uh, four offices in Brazil, one in Manaus, Brasilia, the city, and Sao Paulo. And our main areas are software and user interface, uh, natural technologies, product and manufacturing technologies, and service experience. We, who we are. We are computer scientists, software developers at AMT, and members of Pyramid and PySight. This is our schedule for this presentation. Uh, first, what, what is QT? Uh, followed by PySight description, PySight plus QT Quick, that will show how, how can you make an um, application using PySight. Kit, kit quick. And after a uh, description of PySide system, that is a tool to help uh, developers using PySide to create easily, to create applications easily and package in, in create packages for these applications. First, what is Qt? Qt is a cross voice uh, it's a cross application de de development framework. And what means cross platform? It means that you can write an application using QT and you can deploy this application in more than one uh, target platform. Like if you write an, an application in C and QT, you can deploy this application in a Linux ma ma machine, in a Windows machine, and some mobile device that support QT. A brief PySight uh, description. And what is PySight? PySight is how we call uh, the, bind, the Python binds for the QT framework. Uh, it was produced by INDT and released in the LGP license, like, just as QT. And here is a, a picture that describes how PySight work, works in the, in the runtime environment. Uh, you, you have PySight, that is the thing you import, you go to a, to a Python prompt and you type, and you type, import PySight and, and you can start playing with it. And with PySight, that is the library that deals with the signals and slugs QT. So you can trigger a, a signal in the Python and this library will propagate this sign of to, to the C++ libraries. And the Lipschi Bokin, that is the, the library that uh, makes the interface between Python and, and C++ code. And here is how the, how the binds were, were made. We use the kt4 headers files to get some information, so we, we, we run a uh, a parser on these headers files to get some information in it. And we write some type system description files. This type system, you, you can use it to, to change how these classes from C++ and this, group, this, this function store from C++, we, we, we will show it in the Python site. So if, if, you, if you want to change the name of some class or some function, you can, in this type system file, describe this, this change you want to make, you want to make. And, and you can also uh, write some, some code uh, by hand to, to deal with some problems and with some types, types uh, that you are from C++ to Python. And actually, uh, this is the, the 
platforms, bike side uh, sports. First one, my M5 in the Nokia N900. Uh, second one, Mibo one lot of that is the Nokia N9. The third one, Mibo one lot developer edition. Some, some Linux uh, distributions like Debian, Boot, Arch Linux, Fedora, OpenSUSE, and Mondriva, Mac OS, Microsoft Windows, and an uh, experimental port for, for Android. Uh, how can I install my site? So, if you are using uh, that distribution you, you, you saw before, you have the full installation procedures to, to install by site. So if you are on a Ubuntu machine, you can easily type up apt get install Python by site, and it will be installed uh, in the last version. Or if you have some time, some free time, you can just uh, build, build it from, from the source. You go to the the developer week from QT and there there is a link where you can see how to, to do it. And here is uh, some some topics we we plan to do in the future. Uh, memory optimization we, we are trying to find some solutions to reduce the memory footprint of PySci. Python 3 Super, that it, it, it is a work in progress right now. We are trying to, to get this working with Python 3. And there is, there is no big problem to, to do it so soon if we will be available. And new API features uh, make, make PySize API more Python. And if you want to follow the the chains on our roadmap, you can go to this link and see what you are planning to do in the future. All right. Uh, moving on, we will see some things about BiSide and QtBig. Okay. Uh, so, what is QtBig? Uh, the, the more or less formal definition of uh, QtBig is a collection of collection technologies that allows developers and UI designers to work together for creating responsive and touch-enabled UI for our platform Qt support. This is interesting because we can uh, join two professionals with very, very different skills and designers and developers working the same project through QtSpeak. One of these technologies which comprise QtSpeak is QML. So let's just see what it is. QML, which stands for Qt Method Object Language, is a JavaScript-based declaration language for designing user interface simple applications. Uh, it's, it's a little JavaScript, but not that uh, In QML, we specify our user interface as a tree of objects with properties. So let's so say it's a declaration language. Just uh, write what you want to be. Okay, uh, an example, uh, in this case, we just have just a rectangle uh, on the screen. We just specify width, height, or the color, and put an image inside it. So I just specify the source of the image and the dimensions of the image. So in this case, you just declare it. So you will find a rectangle with this size and with this image on the middle of it. Now this is a very basic uh, KML file. So as it is it's a trick, you just uh, nest the, the objects. So they will appear with some high hierarchy. So uh, this is a very simple file. Uh, for PySide QML, you can easily create an application with PySide and QML together. So we will see a, a small demo that's a simple PySide plus QML application that runs in, in 950, which we will see via VNC. So let's just set up in here. Uh, the screen is updated, uh, but uh, we will be able to see some, some applications. So, this is a, a very simple screen, just a, a text shape, a button, and a label. So, let's go for an application. Um, 
It's a simple application that have a queue of players, they, they duo each other. So we just have the first two players, and the losing player goes to the end of the list, and they get the next. In the case, it's third player. So if you just tap the, the winner player, it will get the next player to, to go against him. So it's a very simple application that shows uh, how a key map the best boards, and we will show uh, in a bit how the, how the events propagate from the byte side. So let me just show uh, the list. We have a, a list of players, too. A list of winners, losers, and things like that. So this application, the HCUI, is made entirely in QML and interfaced with the Python side using signals. So let's just put that aside. Um, let's go back here. Okay, uh, this small uh, application interfaces using signals and slots uh, to the wider side. As a small definition for it, uh, they are using for communication between objects. When I want to notify some object of something, normally a mess, it's similar to callbacks. So, but as uh, a little more flexible. And a very simple definition signal. It's something that is emitted when some event occurs, a uh, button is clicked, a uh, publication waits, whatever, and as long as a function call it responds to some signal. So to exemplify further, we have uh, one way to call a uh, uh, Python yeah, a slot from uh, QML is called calling directly. So we just have here uh, a small, very small class. It's just prints, and uh, when you print something, you have this it's a decorator. So uh, it's defined as a huge slot, huge core slot. So in QML, we instantiate this object and pass it as a complex property, this is uh, a QML region. And so in the QML part, we just call it directly. This is one way to interface from QML to Python. So when I call this in QML, in the case when something is clicked, it will call this function and we print something. I'll just show a small example of this one application we just saw. So let's go back. Okay. Um, you see that when I click the, the name, the, the, the loser goes back and then you get an X of the queue. This is a, an image actually. So let's just see the code here. Um, so what happens here? We have a mouse area which is clickable. And when I click it, I specify which player is the winner. So uh, we call a uh, controller, which is the object exported from Python here, and specify the text, which is the, the name of the winner. And, uh, Zero, which is the first one. So when I click here in the QML part, um, this, the function which run is it's here, it's function meter. So it's a huge bar slot. So we just look at the parameters passing in the QML side and we do some processing. So this is, this is one of the ways to interface the QML with the Python part. So we can, we can just pass a uh, uh, function with some parameters and can go back and forth. So uh, it's a way to get all the events you want from the QML and process them in Python. Okay? Okay, uh, I'm not just lost. Just, there's a mod screen add player. You just get the player and then click here. Uh, in the initial screen, there was a list of players. So we just can parse them and split the list and call a function. So this is a very simple way to interface QML to Python. So but there are other ways to connect this. Uh, these ways are described in the uh, developer week. So uh, there are more than one way to do this actually. Uh, so we can just go later and consider what we do. Alright, uh, next, next one we'll show you about Python.
outside a system which is a tool or a package by the applications. What is PSA? It's a set of Python scripts and file templates that allows painless creation of binary data packages from pure Python applications. So we have some uh, some app you just you don't have to don't want to play with Debian package and something like that, right? On the files you can just use this uh, this script PSA to build directly a binary package to be installed. Um, so it's based on Python SQL that we turn it. It's based on Python SQL and Debian TPP. So uh, at the moment it's focusing on Debian platforms. Okay. At the moment we have a we have two plates for most Maverick and nothing. You can build up the for the SQL distributions. Myama 5 and 900 and Migo 1.2 hard. So we can specify when we create a project which target we want. So we can create a binary package for this is uh, or distros or device. Uh, for Ubuntu, you can choose if you want a, a QTP based or QML based UI. Um, this is because if you want a more uh, native look and feel for Ubuntu, for example, you can just use a QTP based UI. But you want to use QML, the QML all, all the QML resources, can create application that uh, uses QML. Okay, uh, PSA at the moment is more for commands. It's a, a, a command line uh, script. And in it, it creates the initial project layout. All the needed files for you to um, uh, start working on a project. Build that, which builds a data binary package. Simple. Update. There are some fields that we can easily update, like the application name and description, which are relevant to Python to data package. So we can update it really easily. And the list that's playing available thing, available place at the moment. Okay, a user workflow, we use it. We just run PSA in it to create an like, initial layout. Hack a little, build a binary package, install it. So just want to test. You know, hack hack some more, update some field you need, and uh, build another that and so on. So you can uh, modify your application and build a uh, build fast uh, uh, rapidly and binary package install on, on the device or on the home. So this facilitates the, the stage of uh, the building this package. That some, sometimes takes a little time. So you just you just keep as part, use the system to build your package. And don't have to worry with it. So see uh, a second demo when we will create a same application for starting here on home. Okay, let's see here. Well, let's say we, we want to create something that will go to the programming menu. At the moment, I just smell it here. So, let's just create an uh, initial layout called Sample App. Okay, let's see, Sample App. He already created a lot of files that we will, we will be using for build application. You can already build an initial script. Initial QML files for our application, a desktop file which is needed for Ubuntu, uh, an icon, a PNG, and a, a setup.py for uh, uh, students, uh, Python students, uh, an initial file. So, uh, just to see it running, uh, let's send that. Just a very simple application. Just have a label uh, at the middle, and we, I mean, we click it, it repeats. This is the default template. But let's say we just want to change a little. Change, uh, let's say the font is too small. You can just add another uh, property here. Font dot pixel size, say 40. So let's just expand a little bit. So uh, this uh, HTML file is very, uh, uh, very like the one, the first we showed. This one have a rectangle, a text, which is a, a label, and a mouse area which fills all the screen. So, you just run it, and now the label is a little larger. So, uh, we can just see here that we can change the interface UI very easily. With, uh, 
in a very direct way <coughs> to. So uh, there are a lot of, of things you can change with uh, font size, font shape, with the color. And so I documented all the features. Okay. But now let's let's see if you build a binary package for it. Let's install it. Let's have view. Okay, let's just build it and install it here on the moon. Okay, so dash i Shortly. 
So uh, it's already a stable uh, project. Uh, we have a lot of contributions from the community. We have uh, an active mailing list, we have IRC channels. So there are a lot of people uh, interested. Uh, I saw uh, some ex uh, example with uh, some, some time ago, we had a, a developer on our IRC channel which said he was from Disney Interactive. So he was interested to know a little more about what's by side, how to use it, how to do something. Uh, he needed. So, uh, uh, it, my opinion, uh, there are a lot of people uh, which are interested by side nowadays. So, uh, I, I think the project just has to grow. You know, more, more developers and more people interested in uh, finding bugs, which is very important, have already uh, a kind of milestone uh, or thousand bugs so, some time ago. So, uh, not, and not only the commercial development support, but the people using it in five bugs of anything they found, so we can track them how, how, how well we are doing. Okay? Yes? I would like to know why is for Android? Is it stable? No, uh, why is it for Android? was a experimental port done by a developer called Thomas Pro, which is very active in the community. So uh, it's a little, uh, it's a lot of work to make it, make it uh, uh, compile right because you have to have, to have a rooted device, you have to have a, a lot of tools, uh, starting by Qt for Android, which is the uh, minister, uh, I don't know if we call it name right now, but you have to. You need to copy the libraries manually uh, right now. There is no uh, a binary package to install. Yes. We need to have the, the support. Yes, and it's a, it's a very manual process. Um, uh, we, we can just uh, open, uh, uh, give to you the URL of uh, Thomas Perl's page. He explains all the process. So it's a little lengthy, but it's possible. But uh, as I said, he's working alone on this. It's an experimental project from him. But he already could run he, some of his applications on Android. I think it just needs some more people to help him and start going on with the development. Right? Yeah, uh, any more questions? Okay. All right. So let's proceed. Where to find us? The Byside homepage. Uh, if you want, you can just join the mailing list of PySci. We are at Freenode, at the PySci channel. Uh, the, the repository for PySci are on GitHub. And uh, we have a mirror and guitarist too, if you prefer that. This is my mail, I need a lot of RPM, and we are the mail. Okay, and yes, gracias.
cálculo placement. Yeah, that's it. No TML is a JavaScript based on declarative language. So uh, it's, uh, it's based on JavaScript for the side user with the page of the page. So it borrows some of the JavaScript syntax for, for running. So uh, just to turn to the example, uh, let's see here. We just have a rectangle with some properties. So uh, it, it's a, it should be very easy for someone who is not a developer to specify, oh, I want this width, hey, this color, this font, or this rotation, you can rotate something. So you can specify this uh, property very easily. So you just want to make an image, you want to an image, or it wants a text here. So uh, it was uh, developed for facilitating this part. Um, one, uh, one thing that is, is, is nice is because uh, the is a, is a little independent of language. So I can develop a mockup using a C++ backend and, and just after pass the files are actually a Python backend. Just have to need to modify some things, some little things. So, um, is more or less like this. Just have a, a three or two objects. You can run, uh, I didn't say error, but you can run some uh, JavaScript functions here. You can write some JavaScript functions for small tasks. So it's a very, it's a specification very uh, big, so you can uh, take a, a look at uh, effort on the Qt website. So it explains a very, very, very detailed how can that work. So uh, the answer again, question? Yeah, is that you have to write it the uh, mm -hmm. file or you have to do you know? Well, uh, we can do some things with QT uh, state. Unit state Because uh, the newer versions you can write and you can just drag and drop some elements from you know, from a uh, designer. But uh, the problem is that uh, at the moment the uh, QT SDK does not support Python. So it makes it a little difficult to do something. But uh, I think that, that could be done. You could do a very small backend in, in C++, we just loads up a QML file and design an application using QT inside. And so when you want to uh, add functionality, you can just uh, change the backend to Python and start adding things. So uh, uh, as I said, at the moment, as the uh, creator does not support Python, it's a little difficult. But it's possible. You can do this. I am a little, little late too, but are there any way to see the QML running? For example, like a mall or similar for a website? Well, you can see the example here. Uh, let's see here. Oh, let's just let's see this application. It's a uh, as well. Which is for initial player. He gets the text from a, a, a text area, just split in, uh, the lines and all of them. Alright, let's see here it where it is on the device. Let me just close it here. Alright, so, so let me run it. So, uh, let's, let's show the code. Let's show this email file. So uh, this file, uh, that, that text here is defined here. We have an ID with date, position, a font, and a text which comes by the default. All right. So we just uh, uh, let's see. If we have a page. This page is to create components to show another set of components. We define text here and. Okay, the signal connection, in fact, is here. When I click the button that is below, he will call the controller for signal place, control list the object which is possible to come out, using name list.text. Name list is the text here. So we, we will get the text property and we'll pass, we'll pass it here. So if we pass it 
Cortian's function with the partial players, and it will end here in the right side. So it will end here, uh, in the partial players. So, here players. So if you get the text split it in the new lines, we'll print it just for debugging and we'll call the initialized players. So uh, let's just see the console here. Um, if you look on this side, it's also awesome. just to show you just so you can see. Alright? So this was the text we came from QML. When I click start here, uh, you can parse it and it will appear here on the console. So what he done? He read the text, parsed it and printed the list. So it's a, it's a very direct way to, to get from QML to my side. So how Let's so suggest the problem. How this object uh, goes to QML? So down below, uh, we, uh, this class which has uh, the functions called controller. So uh, it's here. Um, I create an instance of it, controller here, right here, in here, uh, and just pass it as a context property for QML. From now on, I can access a uh, uh, class controller in QML and call function. So this is one action from file that can have in back. Alright? Did they answer your question? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Okay, uh, some more questions? No? This is another No, it's a game time okay. like here. It's a knocking on your computer. There's a uh, another set of other So, 